What is up guys? Welcome to day 85 of Fusion. I wish I had like the thing still. Um, I don't know where it's at. Uh, you can tell my setup is different. Uh, things are different. And so what we got going on here is um, I want to make a video for how to make Vex stuff in uh, Fusion, but then also do some other videos as well. So, but what I haven't seen so far are some good videos on how to get your downloaded file onto Fusion and get it to work. So what I need you to be at a certain point is I need you to have the VEX IQ file in a zipped form. So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that unzipped one. So what we're going to do here is that since it's a zipped compressed folder, we need to unzip it or uncompress it so that it's usable. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to right click and hit extract all. So if you're on a Windows or if you're on a Mac computer, Apple computer, you are able to do this. If you're on a Chromebook, uh, you're not able to, but down in the link, I will have a Google Drive folder with these uncompressed files so you can download them and use them. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm going to click extract. It's going to unzip this file. And so you can see I have all the pieces I'm now going to need. So I'm going to click exit now. And we now have these files, a usable format. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to click on uh, Upload and select Files. And so in my downloads, we have the zipped version. If you upload this, I don't think it's actually going to work. I didn't test it, but I'm just assuming it's not. And we're going to do the unzipped files. So we're going to click on one, hold Shift, all right, select all of them, and click Open. It's going to say, hey, or upload these as a step file. So step files are a way for the 3D modeling system you're using to say, hey, this is the part, this is the dimensions of it. It doesn't have any information as far as how it was made. So now, but I wanna make sure instead of just throwing this willy-nilly into somewhere, we're gonna put this in a specific location. So I'm gonna create a new folder, I'm gonna call this, you know, Vex Parts Video. That way we know I'm actually using parts we just uploaded in the video. So I'm gonna click select. Ooh, that change look, oh, let's change that. Let's try, new folder. Something looked a little funky there. Vex parts video. Okay, and we're gonna select that. So now we see Vex parts videos where it's going. You can call it Vex parts, you can call it, I don't know, whatever you want to. But I'd recommend throwing it into a folder, that way it's not cluttering up your space. Good file management. So we're going to go ahead and click on Upload. What it's going to do then is going to give me this status page. And so it's going to take about hopefully 45 seconds for these parts to upload. And so now we're going to be able to actually use them. There's a couple of things in here I want to mention while we're just buying time for this. That your 2 inch connect, two inch uh, rod here isn't actually 2 inches. So when you're building stuff, you gotta got to be cognizant of what you're selecting because if you start from one end and the other and assume something is two inches, it's, it's going to be off. This something is not going to match up. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to click on close, and those files are still uploading. You see I now have this file folder called Vex Parts Video, and it's pulling in all these pieces. What I found out, though, is that sometimes, especially the internet flickers or something else, I might even get it, you'll get a little error saying part couldn't be uploaded. And so when you're making these parts, sometimes you have to upload it multiple times, especially if it's body Wi-Fi. If you have Chromebook, what do you do? Well, you just download the parts, give them the link, and then you upload just like we did, okay, from your downloads folder. Okay, now these parts are taking a little bit of uh, time to upload. Um, it could be for a variety of reasons. It could be my internet. It could be I've uploaded these parts already and it's already trying to freak out. But what we're going to do then is I notice that the pieces in here that still need to upload aren't the ones I need right now. So I'm going to click on the plus sign here. And we're going to save this design. We're going to call it 85. We're going to want, you know, pulley system B2. All right. So we're going to go ahead and then pull in the parts we need for this first assembly. I know I'm going to need a beam. I know I'm going to need two shafts, so I'm just going to drag and drop, drag and drop again. 
I'm not going to move them right now because I know I'm, I, this, I think, is just wasting time. I know I can, after I get all my pieces in there, I can kind of move them where I want them to be. Okay, and then I know I'm going to need a 10 millimeter pulley, and I know I'm going to need a 40 millimeter pulley. Okay. All right, there we go. I should have my 10. I got my 40. I got one rod. I've got a second rod. And I've got my beam. Okay, as we do with all assemblies, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to right click and I'm going to ground that beam. I'm going to make sure it doesn't move. I can't move it. That way, when I start to put my joints in, they're going to go in as expected. So I'm going to click on joint. I'm going to click on the face of this axle with the face of this hole. And I'm going to pull it through one inch. Like I said, it's two inches though. So this one inch and this one inch might look even on both sides, but it's not actually. And so make sure that our motion there for our joint is going to be Revolute. By default, I believe it's going to be rigid, but since I've already done this, Revolute is the default right now. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to just do another one. We're going to do, oh, nope, clicked on the wrong thing. J for joint. And there we go. We're going to pull it through an inch. Click OK. And there we go. <laughs> we're already cooking on grease, folks. I'm going to click join again. J on my keyboard. I'm going to zoom in really close. I'm going to highlight this face. That way I don't get in the face of the pulley. I'm going to hold down control. That way I know I've actually got the face of that pulley for what I want. We're going to zoom out a little bit. Go here. Flip my axis, and then go back half an inch. Click OK. And there we go. One last joint, and I believe we're almost done. I'm going to zoom into this face. Hold down Control key. Click on that center. Click on this face. There we go, flip my axis. We'll go in half an inch, click OK. All right, now, by default, there's a problem here. Um, I, since I didn't change my joints as I was doing them, we have a problem. I got a Revolute here and I got a Revolute here. So if I spin this, my axle actually isn't spinning. Okay, we got a problem there. So I'm gonna click on this joint, right click, edit joint, and instead of a Revolute, it's just gonna be a rigid. Same thing through this one. Right click, edit joint. Instead of Revolute, it's going to be a rigid. Call it done, there we go. Now, if this one spins, hey, hey, it looks good. This one spins, hey, hey, it looks good. I can't pull it out of place. There we go. All right, where do we go from here? We're gonna boo assembly. We're going to do a motion link. We're gonna link this Revolute with this Revolute. And we're almost done, folks. That looks okay. The problem is that since these pulleys are different sizes, we also have to think about our ratio, our mechanical advantage, or our gear ratio here. I guess it's not specifically a gear ratio, but it's a ratio nonetheless. It's a mechanical advantage. What do we type in here? Well, this is a one to four ratio, 10 millimeter to 40 millimeter, uh, or one to four. So I found out For every four degrees for the first one, second one's only gonna go one. There you go. You could spend a lot of time focusing on, hey, can we get this other ratio right? Can we do plug in some other numbers? As long as it's a one to four ratio when you spin it and you're all right. So how do I double check that? Well, if I spin this big pulley right here one time, we notice that the pulley on the left is going to rotate four times. Let's try that again. There we go. And all the way around, let's try it again. One, two, oh, let's try it again. Three and four. I'm gonna do that again. Let's go to the front side. Okay, both of the checkered flags are the top. So we go one, two, three, 
and four. Okay. There we go, folks. All right. We've officially made our system. If I look on the top view, everything's nice and lined up. And we are good to go for this pulley system. Okay. Well, we've made a pulley system. We're going to have make some of the other ones here down the line. But I'm excited to wrap up the 100-day series for Fusion and maybe even just do another Tomata for the fun of it. You guys have been awesome. If your teachers make you watch these videos and you are going crazy, uh, I'm sorry. Teachers, if you make your students watch these videos, I really appreciate it and it's been tons of fun. If you want to be helpful for me, um, we can go ahead and start to like and subscribe and all that goodness. We do have one problem though, and I just noticed it. This right here. My axle isn't lined up appropriately. And how do we fix that? Well, I'm gonna edit this joint, and that is a 45 degree misalignment. Boop. There we go. There we go. That way my axle isn't going through my gears, just mated with it. Okay, guys. This video has been tons of fun. If you need any help, please, please, please feel free to reach out. Um, like and subscribe. All that goodness. We will, in the future, tomorrow hopefully, uh, we will wrap up, uh, make some more machines using these VEX parts, and then call it done. You guys are awesome. Keep being awesome, and I'll see you later. Take care.